Hello, my name is Brian Thoreau. Welcome to week eight of the Foundations of Action Research. I'm the discussion leader. I thought I would start with a video chat here. This is our assignment this week. It asks us to look at the problem set and specifically to uh, make a whisker plot. So I was going to start with that um, available at our data tutorial. I go in here, I need to get the data first. So I click on the Excel file, go over here, open that up. I'm going to make myself disappear now. Bye bye. Um, I can enable editing the data. So that allows me to go in here and copy it all. Copy. And then I'm going to go back to my web pages. And I can go over here, new tab. I have already saved in here a, a link to a site called plotly.create. You can see the URL um, show up there on the top screen. Um, I just have a bookmark because I, I use it quite often. It allows me to go in here. Uh, I can select on the data table. And then I'm just going to hit Control V, my shortcut key for paste. I'm sure there's another way to do that, but I uh, I like my shortcut keys. What can I say? Um, I'm going to rename this column here by selecting on selecting the arrow, renaming header. And I'm just going to this was the pretest column, so I'm going to call it the pretest column and confirm that. And then I'm going to do the same thing for column F. Select that little tab, rename the header, and I'm going to call this the post test. Um, and confirm that just to have my data look a little bit neater. Um, you can see down below I haven't had I haven't created a plot yet, so there's nothing to see there. It's just an empty grid. Over here on the left we have the chart type. The default is scatter plot. I'm going to click on that, and I get all these other choices. Um, I'm going to go for box plot because that's what we were asked to do for this assignment. So I'm going to box plot. Now I have to choose my value. It's a pull down menu. Um, I renamed columns E and F, pretest and post test, just to make it easier for me to know. Um, but it wouldn't affect anything here. It also pre labels the graphs. So I'm going to say pretest here, and it shows up. And now you can see on the side, um, I have uh, a graph that's starting to show up. I don't need the data table to be view visible anymore. So I got my pretest data in there. Well, I want to add a trace. Uh, so I'm going to add, instead of my pretest, I want my post test to be next to that. And I can change my axis labels. I can have this just be like test scores on the side. I did this by clicking right on it. And this is already labeled for me, pretest, post test. The default is the column header. And that's why I changed those at the very beginning. Uh, I can put a name on this. I can be like, oh, this is the sample for week eight. Oh, oops, <laughs> week asterisk, week, week eight. Um, scatter or whisker. We can call it a box plot. Let's just call it box plot. I don't know what to call it. There is this that's got a title at this point. Um, now there's all kinds of options I can have here inside of Create, but something building off of from yesterday, I'm going to click on the tab here that says Style. So when I click on that style, I can go to Traces, and now I get the options here. I can either do all traces or an individual trace. I don't want to do, in, I could have s custom things for just one of the two box plots that are side by side, but I want to do the same thing for both of them. And what I want to do is just Going, pulling on the, oops, pulling on this menu here. It's a very skinny bar. Pull it down. I go down here to where it says display points. And currently, it's only displaying the outliers. And you can see that here, there's one outlier down here for pretest the 33 score. And there's a couple of outliers down here. Um, we haven't talked about that in the class yet, but there's outliers. What I really wanted to do here is I can look at all the data. And now it's plotted all the data right next to the box and whisker. And the neat thing about Plotly is I can mouse over. When I mouse over, I can see the individual values of these points. If I wanted to see what was that point, who is that right there? And I could have whatever labels I want. Also, you may have seen as I mouse over the box and whisker plot, it shows the values for the the Q1, the first quartile, and the Q3, second quartile. It's got the median here, the, the max, uh, and the minimum. They're all on top of this. There's quite a bit of statistics displayed as I mouse over. They do disappear when you go away, so you have to either remember them um, or you can get them some other, other way. Another thing you can do here inside of Plotly is go to Analysis and I can add an analysis. I want to do descriptive statistics. That's what we're doing this week. There are fancier things, but just, and I want to target a column. Let's say I want to do the pretest column. I run that, and it tells me the exact values for all of, um, all these different parts of that. And again, I could copy and paste this. My favorite way to do that is the print screen button, which is Control Print Screen on a PC, or I think it's Shift uh, Shift Control Four on a Apple. 
um, my students have. But you can just print the screen and paste that as an image anywhere else. But now I can do that data. I could do the same analysis. I can add, whoops, <laughs> I can add, I can minimize this one, and I can add another analysis that's descriptive for the other column, for the post test, and run that and see those statistics displayed as well. Now I've got all this wonderful data here. I might want to save it. So I go down here in the bottom corner to save. Um, I need to make it public because it's free and that's what it is, but nobody's going to care about that. I hit save, it's saving, and it's done. And now I can go to share. And in the sharing here, I get a link to this site. I can go control C, copy that link, or right, it's automatic. I can share it with other things. I can embed and collaborate. I can share it with us so we could all work at the same graph in lifetime. Uh, I'll go ahead and close that now. If I go back up a new tab just to show you what that share looks like, control V, paste that new link I got, and hopefully, boom, there's a new graph. And there it is, nice and big. You see it's got the headings on the X axis and the Y axis already there. There's a spot people can put comments if I wanted to put my own comments, like a footer on the graph. Uh, a nice thing that also happens here, um, since the graph is here, when I mouse over the graph, the data does still show up. And if it is embedded in a web page, always the data is totally visible. Plot is very good at transparency with that. But at the top of this graph, there's a picture here. It says download plot is PNG file. So it's going to make it a picture file. I click on that, and it automatically gives me a copy that now I can insert into a text document if I wanted to do that. If I don't want PNG, I don't like that style, I can click on export tab, and it gives me so many other options here. I can export as a JPEG if you don't like G, um, the PNG, um, or I can do any of these coding formats if I wanted to get really fancy with it later on. Um, Plotly is based on Python, so if you let Python fan. But just for example, click on JPEG, and then down here at the bottom corner, there it is, the same JPEG that I can, I can save this however I want, just like any other JPEG file. Um, whatever labels I had on are on there. Um, and I could also put this into another file and just add, if I wanted to add labels for, them, for the, the average inside here or any data points I wanted to label. Okay, there's my tour of Plotly um, and how I would approach analyzing some of this data. Um, hopefully you found it interesting and I'll see, maybe I'll put another video um, up for um, calculating the gains, um, the normalized gains inside here as well, or how I approach it. I encourage you to post your own videos or beast your own thoughts on how to do this. Thanks for listening. Hope it wasn't too long for you.